Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I am Sasha Segan, this is Matt Buzzy. Uh, if you are watching us right now at this exact moment on Facebook, uh, please comment, ask questions about anything you like in the comments field. If you are watching us later at another time, uh, in a galaxy far, far away, long ago, or in the future, on YouTube, then like and subscribe, and consider coming over to Facebook at 10 a.m. on weekdays uh, to participate in the conversation. Our cool thing today is the Razor Blade Stealth, which is confusing me because didn't we just have this on one cool thing like two months ago? There are so many. Um, they, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, you're not going crazy. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of these things. They update them pretty frequently. Um, there's a lot of SKUs. They update every, at least twice a year with this stealth, at least. Um, so, so, wait, 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 wait. So this is updated from the model that we reviewed in October? Yes. Whoa. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of these things. I, I, I feel like there's, I know there's always readers out there who are like, you know, should I get a such and such mm -hmm. or should I wait for the such and such? And I feel like I feel like if you're like if you're shopping for a razor blade, you're sure. going to end up waiting forever because there will be a new one every yeah. Like, there's six always weeks. there's always something around the corner. Um, <laughs> this should be for the time being. Now I think this might be the, the one to get because okay. you're not going to get another another jump for a while now. Okay. Um, so so why did it change? So the last one changed, it added the 13.3 inch screen size. It mm -hmm. was only 12 and a half inch before that. So it gave you a little bigger without making the laptop bigger. It was, it was they, they mm -hmm. thinned down on their bezels. Um, other than that, same look, same thing. Uh, but inside um, of this one, it has the same 13.3 inch screen, but they mm -hmm. added the new KB Lake R processor, which okay. is Intel's eighth gen, the first one coming to, uh, to mobile computers and quad core. So, so now, wh why does this, why is this KB Lake R as R. opposed to being named after a different Californian geographical feature? R. That'll be the next really big jump. This is sort of the in between, sort of a little little hot little update, the update to uh, the jump to quad core for mm -hmm. this stuff. Um, so getting that uh, is kind of a big deal because um, it does actually give a meaningful performance boost. Because the the whole you know the Skylake KB Lake the last few jumps have been. Minimal, this is actually, because there's more cores, actually a pretty big, pretty big jump. So it's kind of funny. So you're saying that the moving between the chips with the different names was actually less of a performance bump than these two chips which have the same name. Uh, yeah, since, since they started that sort of TikTok uh, minimal incremental jump, um, mm -hmm. there were less, every other one was less of a, of a, of mm -hmm. a leap. Um, now that they're bumping this up to a new generation, because it technically is a new generation, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. KB Lake, but it's KB Lake R. It's, it, it means something different. Mm -hmm. um, and the performance is there, uh, especially obviously on multi-core things. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get in more into the details after this first question. Oh, what is the, uh, what are the screen specs? So the screen specs, <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Uh, this is a QHD plus touch display, um, which that's 3200 by 1800. Okay. Uh, that's very high resolution. It's mm -hmm. it's really vibrant, IGZO, Indium, Galley, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all sorts of, yeah, all sorts of technology in there to make it look as vibrant as I hope it's appearing on the screen. Um, Though I gotta say with the gloss, mm -hmm. my experience of the viewing angles here is not tremendous. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a reflection of your wrist more than the image on the screen. Sure, yeah, it's a, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty reflective. Um, that is, a, that is something you have to deal with because that, when you do the matte finish, the picture is kind of dull. It's, yeah, it's not, yeah. As, it's not as nice to look at. Um, but you don't get those reflections. So if you're, if you're in like super bright lighting, and like gaming and multimedia laptops tend to have the gloss because they want the like punch you in the face colors. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that is a little bit of a trade off if you're in glare. But I usually find an angle where it's where it's fine. Um, for the rest of the specs, while we're here, uh, it's fourteen ninety nine mm -hmm. um, as is. That's a hundred dollars more than the non KB like R version because mm -hmm. the, the processor is faster. Um, 256 gig SSD. Mm -hmm. um, it weighs just so just under three pounds. Um, so it's obviously portable. The idea behind the Stealth, if you're unfamiliar, you might think Razer's stuff is all gaming. The Stealth is not. It is just their ultra portable, meant to give you the same nice build that people like out of the blade, but uh, you know, just for general use, carrying it around, doing lighter tasks. Can you get it configured with more storage? You can. It goes up to a terabyte, okay. um, which you know gets pricey, obviously, because 
That's just how SSD storage does. So from a graphics perspective, this is just the Intel integrated graphics, Yeah, it's, right? it's now that it's the new generation, it's Intel, not HD, it's Intel UHD 620, mm -hmm. which means the same thing. It's, it's, it's as capable for gaming, which is to say, not very. If you want to, could you attach a, uh, could you attach an external Razer Core? Uh, you can, yeah, it's, it's USB-C powered. You can put an external, um, an external graphics card right in there and power mm -hmm. it with something more powerful when you're at home on your desk and then mm -hmm. take it with you on the go. That's sort of the idea between the, the Stealth and the Core combined. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's other competition in the category. The last one was our editor's choice, the previous, the similar, the, the last 13.3 mm -hmm. inch one, because we really like the jump in the screen size. Um, it was a lot to like about it. Mm -hmm. But since then, in that in that little window, mm -hmm. little, little though it was, uh, we reviewed the Dell XPS 13 uh, 9360. Um, I think that's the model number. Um, and that came in at a little less than this, and it also <laughs> is with the eighth gen processor. Um, it's a little, little faster. Um, the way, and it has, you know, the XPS systems have their own nice build. The way it's able to cut the cost is it's only a 1080p screen, not mm -hmm. this much higher resolution, and it's non-touch. So, but so going to a 1080p non-touch screen, and then we'll take a question, but yeah. I, I want to ask my question first. Uh, going to a 1080p non-touch screen, does that give the Dell significantly better battery life as well? Um, yes, it, it lasted much longer. Um, that is the other sort of one caveat. Between the, between the price and the fact that not everyone really wants touch, um, mm -hmm. the battery life was the other thing. So this is, this is good. It's not great for the category. Um, part of that is the high resolution. Um, it lasted about eight and a half hours under test, but I believe the Dell was like 15 something. Yeah, I mean, I see this I see this a lot when I'm reviewing mobile phones that basically the more pixels you're trying to put on a battery the same size, yeah. you know, it's gonna have an impact on battery life. Yeah, those 4K laptops do not last the longest yeah. out there. Either. Looks like we have uh, some more questions. And what is the battery life? Uh, this was about eight and a half hours on a rundown test, which is good. That's all day. It's, it's going to last you through the day um, as long as you're not doing something crazy strenuous all day um, or using like a, a downloading a ton of stuff, you know, using mm -hmm. a ton of bandwidth. And, and we do like a, an airplane mode sort of video rundown test. So it's it's eight and a half hours of constantly playing local video. So that's mm -hmm. that's a lot of battery. That's that's you know a long plane flight of, of video watching, mm -hmm. say. Uh, but then it'll be dead at the end <laughs> if you're going if you're going far. You don't, you don't have much left after. We have another question. Is it good for picture and video editing? And if not, is there a budget laptop that would be um, more affordable? Well, first of all, this is not a budget laptop. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. This is 1500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, good, it's, good in, it's good in the way that you... The, the extra core does uh, make a... The extra cores make a big difference for the multimedia stuff. So, like, yeah. it is definitely faster than previous generation stuff on, like, video encoding and, and you know, running Photoshop and And something and you have to remember is that for photo and video editing, that is a CPU task, not a GPU task. Yeah. And so you don't need a lot of GPU, and what matters is having that fastest possible processor. Yeah, and so, like, it does make a difference. And that said, because it's CPU tied, you can always get faster. Mm -hmm. um, the clock speed on this isn't super high. It's 1.8 gigahertz, and you look at that and you say, that's not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but the Dell's the same, the, I believe the Lenovo Yoga 920 is the same. Uh, they take those relatively low clock speeds, but they have more cores. So when it's hyper-threading and, and using all these, all these cores to do uh, this task faster, it, it adds up. Um, yeah, I you feel can always get faster with more expensive systems, obviously. So yeah, you can look at like a professional workstation or, but or also, a more expensive laptop, and it will be faster for that stuff, but it's it's competent for, for multimedia But stuff. also, even in the $1,000 range, you can probably get a faster processor if you're willing to give up this level of thin and lightness. Right, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. That you're getting the portable form, you're getting the, the metal build, you're getting the, uh, the, the keyboard with the mm -hmm. fun keys that mm -hmm. you can change the individual colors of. Um, so, you know, there are trade-offs, but uh, the base at, at its base level, yeah, the, the processor is, is confident and very fast. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a $900 ThinkPad out there that if you're talking about just pure performance in Photoshop, you will be able like, to... Yeah, pure CPU stuff. Exactly, might, might pure CPU faster. stuff. There's some $900 ThinkPad that can easily match this beautiful $1,500 laptop, but it's bigger, it's clunkier, it's heavier, it's not as pretty, it doesn't have it doesn't have that Razer styling, it probably does not have this screen resolution, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's take another question. What's your personal opinion on the build quality, look, and feel? Um, I mean, it's it, it's easy for me to say, I guess. I see these things come through all the time, so they're very familiar to me. Um, these are built really nicely. Um, that's sort of the, really the idea behind the I stealth. Mean, it's yeah. like, they had these these Blade Razer gaming laptops that that people liked the build of so much, but didn't have a use for necessarily. So um, that's I, the appeal, really, is is the design. Uh, it's it's. I mean, you can say your piece too, but yeah. I think uh, it's machined aluminum. It's it's shiny. It's sleek. Um, not everyone loves the shiny Razer logo. It is also available in gunmetal, um, mm -hmm. 
and I believe that one doesn't have the neon. It might, but I think that's etched in silver, so I think if you don't like that uh, neon green, that might be, the, I think, it might still have the same logo, but the ones I've seen, it's been an etched silver logo, so it's not the same, um, the same green color. Um, yeah, it's, it's eye-catching, I'll say. Yeah, I mean, I hate the Razer logo. Mm -hmm. um, I hate it with a passion, sure. but uh, the build on these Razer laptops is absolutely gorgeous. And it is very clearly uh, thought through at every level. Uh, the materials are terrific. Mm -hmm. It is, it is uh, firm, it feels, it feels basically durable. Um, it's that's one of the best touch of pads of. around. Uh, these are these are really nice to use. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the keys have sufficient throw. I mean, it's not you know, is it a Lenovo keyboard? Not quite, but it's a lot better than for something so small. Yeah, the, the travel on this is pretty good. Much better than the MacBook Pro non non keys. Yeah, but them. anything like my <laughs> you know like a toddler drawing letters in squares on a table with a crayon is better than the MacBook keyboard. I don't disagree. Okay, uh, we have another question. Are there vents on the bottom or sides or top? The fans are on the bottom. Um, they're here. That is something that's a little. It can it, under a lot of pressure, a lot of um, you know strain. It, they do can get not loud. Um, not, certainly not like the blade. The the Razer blade, the gaming one, gets because mm -hmm. it has honestly not to similar size fans for a gaming laptop. Mm -hmm. So like to not really up the the, the fans or the vent size, is, it seems a little nuts because it gets that gets loud. This doesn't really. Um, but you can, it does unfortunately have that sort of like muffle effect if you threw it on like a, a comforter or something, you're worried about like your laptop breathing. So. How bad, how bad is the port situation here? Uh, not, it's not. Because Whoa. they actually kept USB 3, they have USB-C, uh, they even have HDMI for the external display uh, connection. The one thing, if you do want to use the USB-C port, which does have Thunderbolt 3, you can't charge it at the same time because that is the power. Cord. So, so you would want to for home, like with all these like USB C uh, thin lights, I like to recommend a desktop dock. Sure. Because also then you can leave like all of your extra peripherals plugged into the desktop dock and leave your power plugged into the desktop dock and then just dock yeah. it and undock. Much less of a hassle when you um. Also, speaking of, of docks and things, the charger is nice and small. Oh yeah. Um, that's not like a, an annoying thing to to bring around with you. So that's really tiny. I appreciate that. It's not a big brick. It, now, was that the same about the previous uh, Stealth? Yeah, thing? they they downsized to this I think a while ago, and, and okay. have kept the same. Um, it's nice and small. Okay. And there's no there's no wall uh, there's no wall brick. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, we're in business. We got another question. Does this get hot to the touch on CPU intensive tasks? Um, a little. Not not uh it's not on the right not now. on the top. I think on the bottom it might get a little a little hot, but not uh, not anything crazy that I noticed. It's it's pretty good. Pleasantly toasty. Pleasantly toasty. Nice little nice little heater for the winter, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 extremely cold all down the northeast coast of North America right now. Mm. So so I'm I'm actually enjoying uh, laptops with thermal problems. Yes, yes. Like I, I want I want to recommend laptops with thermal problems for your frigid week. Yes, of yeah. course. But this does not have thermal problems. No, no, no. Um, okay. Yeah. So I think I mean I think that covers the bases. It's uh, as I said, you can get two fifty six SSD or five twelve or a terabyte. Mm. Uh, the price goes up quite a bit. I think it's like twenty ninety nine for the terabyte. Mm -hmm. So. So is the previous <laughs> Stealth still on sale, or have they rusticated it for this I, one? I, that's actually a good question. I think it might be. It might be. Uh, they they do like a discounted like previous model type thing for a while. There's like a window you can like shop the other ones discounted. I don't know if that's still going or not. I haven't looked. Um, it might be up there still, but this is like the model to get now. But like, it's, but like, I guess where my question is going is, are there people who might want to swoop down on the discounted previous model right now, given might. that you know this is be, this has been updated so quickly? You might. I think I did address that in my review. You might, but it's also it's. I don't say only a hundred dollars because it's people's money. I don't want to make assumptions. Um, but if you're given that disclaimer, you're also still buying. A fifteen hundred dollar uh, laptop, or thirteen hundred dollar laptop. So you're not, yeah. you, you know, have some money to spend, and you're you're looking in that range already. I would say a hundred dollars. Get the newer one. It has mm -hmm. it has two more cores. It has better speeds. Uh, the battery was a little longer. Um, there's not really a reason if you're already in that price range. Like I said, it doesn't apply to everybody. But if you're shopping in that range already, an extra hundred dollars on an investment that you're hoping is going to last you uh, several years, mm -hmm. and it puts off. When you'll need to replace it by another, I don't know, if not a year, months. Because of the processor. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. you know, uh, it's probably worth just getting the newest one, I would say. Another question. Are the bezels still big? They're smaller than they were. Um, that's the thing, that's how they got the, on the last version, that's how they got the 13.3 inch size up from 12 and a half. Um, they're a lot smaller. I don't know if that's coming through in the camera. 
Um, they were like sizable before. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't get rid of them. It's not like the you know, the XPS with like the yeah, infinity. Yeah, it's not edge a screen. Yeah, yeah, it's not. They're not gone. Um, but they do that so you can get some of the touch and some of the other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, and so that the camera isn't in the nose piece. Yeah, it no nostril your nose. cam. Yeah, no nostril cam, uh, which people really, really get up in arms about. I almost never use my laptop webcam, you can so say I it, don't care. But you can say it really gets up <laughs> people's noses. It really, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, any more questions out there? Terrific. So, uh, Razor Blade Stealth 2018. Yeah. Okay. Not 2017. Not 2016. Not either of the 2017 yeah. models. Yeah. And if you go on their yeah. site, it might just look. It just says you know, the new Razor Blade Stealth. That's, okay. So that's okay. what you'll see. This under is the newest one. But like, but like, if you're confused and like you're shopping at like Best Buy or a site like that, you look for the KB Lake R yeah. version, the one that pirates like. It's the i7 8550U. Uh, yeah. Is okay. the processor in this one. Okay. Great. Great. So uh, it is four stars? Four and a half stars. Four and a half that, stars. Wait, that was the score we gave the last one. For $100 more, it's faster and it's newer. There wasn't really a reason to downgrade it. We didn't give it the editor's choice, though, because of the Dell that came out in the meantime. Um, on sort of a, just a more objective level, it is a little faster. The battery's much longer, and it's $100, 100 ish, 150 I don't remember exactly, uh, less. You don't get the you don't get the QHD plus screen. You just 1080p and it's non-touch. So the price mm -hmm. you can excuse very easily where the price mm -hmm. difference comes from. Um, but as a little cheaper option for something that's still built really nicely, uh, we gave the XPS the editor choice. So terrific as always. The razor it's sharp. Uh, it uh, the review is up on PCMag.com. Go take a look. Thank you all for watching on Facebook or YouTube. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're on Facebook, please return at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow for another One Cool Thing.